Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Jackie Moserell. I am Dean of Saunders College of Business, and we are so excited to be celebrating National Travel and Tourism Week with you through this webinar, Growing and Branding Destinations, Rock 2025. As a business school at the intersection of business and technology, including a, a highly regarded and well-established hospitality program, we thought it would be a great opportunity to leverage the faculty expertise in hospitality at RAT combined with some of our leading experts in the region um, and really have a great discussion around Rochester and growing and branding our destinations, particularly as we emerge out of a pandemic. So with that, I am going to turn it over to Associate Professor at RIT in Hospitality, Dr. Mohamed Keskin. Mohamed? Thank, thank you so much, Dean uh, Mosrell. I say good evening, good afternoon, and good morning, because I know that there are uh, people in the audience in different, from different parts of the world. I would like to welcome everybody to this webinar as well. So our webinar topic is on growing and branding destinations. So attracting and sustaining people uh, it, an investment is crucial in growing and branding destination destinations. So we would like to learn about how a destination, city or place attracts and sustains people. The role of leisure, hospitality and tourism industries play in destination management cycle. So our speakers are experts and leaders in these topics to tackle these issues from four perspectives of a nice place to live, work, visit, and invest. So we have Mr. Matt Halwat. He is the president of the and chief executive officer at Greater Rochester Enterprise. Greater Rochester Enterprise is committed to attracting new capital investment and jobs to the Greater Rochester region of New York. And he's gonna be addressing the topics of creating a nice place to invest and work. And then we also have uh, Mr. Dan Jeffries, who is a president of Visit Rochester. Visit Rochester is the official tourism promotion agency for Greater Rochester and Monterey County. And he's gonna be addressing the topics of creating a nice place to live and work. So without further ado, please go ahead and you know, start Mr. Matt Herblet. So you're gonna be talking about your organization and you know, how Rochester does a great job in terms of investing and creating a nice place to live. Thank you for that uh, kind introduction. So if we can, uh, there we go. Um, uh, for Greater Rochester Enterprise, we really focus on uh, the business investments in the region. And uh, part of why hospitality, tourism is so important to the work that we do is that quality of life focus. Uh, we, we focus on uh, the key line that uh, the Greater Rochester region is a place where smart people live and smart businesses grow. And if we uh, turn to the next slide, um, we can, uh, Greater Rochester Enterprise was created um, in 2003 to promote the region nationally for business investment. So our focus is um, creating that quality of place. We work very closely with Visit Rochester and other organizations in the community to, to uh, certainly promote the outstanding quality of life and, and the, folk, the fact that we've got smart people here to grow a business. So we uh, support existing businesses growing in the region and then attracting new investment to the region. And we've had some success there, which we'll get to a little later. And then it is really that key line from an organizational standpoint of connecting uh, the corporate executive to the right people and the right resources to expand their business in the greater, greater Rochester region. So if we go to the next slide, we'll show you some of the work that we've done on our market. Well, this is uh, an overview of the region. So when we talk about the greater Rochester region, also known as the Finger Lakes region in New York state, it is the nine counties surrounding Rochester, just over uh, 1.1 million people, almost 1.2. The workforce it hovers around 600,000 people, which is very important. Businesses uh, make decisions, especially on corporate site selection based on regional data. It's also a very diverse region uh, with our core being the city of Rochester, a city of about 210,000 in population, uh, as well as very rural areas uh, that have outstanding uh, places to visit, as well as the Finger Lakes and the Grand Canyon of the East in Letchworth, and of course, Lake Ontario to the north. So if we go to the next slide, 
Uh, some of the accolades that we promote for Rochester and the reasons why, uh, why we are seeing success with people moving here, visiting, uh, as well as growing business is the fact that uh, we've been ranked by Business Insider as the uh, best place in the Northeast to live post-pandemic, and we're seeing that. The housing market is, is very hot right now with people both renting and buying homes throughout the region. Uh, seventh best place in the United States to live post-pandemic, also the number one market for cybersecurity hiring opportunities. That's largely due to Rochester Institute of Technology. So we appreciate that. Uh, one of my favorites is the safest we uh, weather city in the Northeast. So uh, uh, we do know that water is one of our outstanding natural resources. We get a dusting of snow from time to time and that water helps us with things like semiconductor operations as well as food and beverage processing and also the growing uh, region that we have in this state and certainly our lakes that we leverage for some outstanding quality of life. Uh, we've had a very hot real estate market. Uh, we're one of the least stressed out cities, uh, one of the fifth best cities in the country for remote workers, uh, top 10 most affordable from Forbes, as well as that number one pet, uh, market for patents per thousand workers um, and that vibrancy in the arts. So you can see where the place branding, uh, the marketing, the quality of life, the tourism, the hospitality, all um, coalesces around the fact that you, we're also a place where you wanna grow a business and have success with innovation. So if we go to the next slide, we can show you some of the examples um, where we are promoting Rochester, especially in, in uh, larger metros on the East Coast in Boston, New York City, San Francisco, as well as uh, Chicago, Seattle. These are to decision makers who are making corporate uh, decisions as well as alumni who may have been in upstate New York and may be considering an opportunity to come back to work for some of the firms that are hiring now in the region. So we focus on that back to rock messaging where the perfect size for business growth, uh, showing downtown Rochester as that right size low city uh, lo locale where you should come back. And then on the next slide, we also show uh, again, joining other smart companies. You're in good company here and we we, this is all digital marketing designed to have uh, folks who have an affinity or a connection to upstate New York, to Rochester, to be able to see some of the companies that are growing in the region, hiring and investing so that in the hopes that they would come back here, live, work and play. And then if we go to the next slide, you'll see another example uh, of some of our digital messaging. Again, where companies are hiring in Rochester, we've got sky high potential. This is a, a downtown uh, scene looking down the Genesee River and connections are within reach. So we're what we like to say is we're big enough to matter, but we're also small enough to connect and solve problems. And then if we go to the next slide, uh, we, we are working again with uh, Rock 2025 and other partners, our Chamber of Commerce and, and Visit Rochester on this regional place brand. So this goes beyond the corporate uh, work that we do in, record, in recruiting companies here to that greater Rock effort, developing a unifying brand uh, and messaging platform to promote uh, the greater Rochester region as a great place to live, to visit, uh, to play, and certainly to grow a business, both on the entrepreneurial side, as well as joining one of the many firms that are hiring. And this effort is just getting started. We expect to have more examples of um, uh, digital and other media marketing as, as this brand takes hold and begins to unify on that place branding effort. Um, and then if we go to the next slide, I believe we have, uh, again, that the, the key messaging here. So we will grow greater for business expansion, for entrepreneurship, be greater in that lifestyle area, which is so important to people who wanna work and uh, build a business in the region. Also promoting our urban revitalization, business expansion, the tourism, arts, outdoor activities and the food scene, especially the outdoor activities that have become more pronounced and advantageous for a region like ours uh, to leverage post COVID and even in the COVID environment, that quality of life, affordable lifestyle, the community support, that connectivity and the fact that we celebrate. Uh, we have so many outstanding festivals that are gonna be coming back online post COVID. And I'm sure Don will talk more about that uh, in the work that Visit Rochester does. And then uh, if we go to the next slide. So these are some examples of companies that have, have grown in the region. Um, in 2020, we actually had a very successful year with over $550 million of capital investment promise. And when we talk about investment, that's corporate investment in buildings, equipment, furniture and fixtures, hard assets that they will be investing in. Uh, so some examples here are Greenlight Bioscience. They're building a new operation at Eastman Business Park. Lifecycle is also investing in the region uh, to, to build a lithium ion battery recycling 
uh, center here in the region, Pro Ampac, an $8 million investment with 30 new jobs. Greenlight Networks building out a fiber uh, network with high speed bandwidth uh, throughout the region. Gorbel is adding uh, manufacturing expertise in the region. Butler Till is building a new building in downtown Rochester. And CareStream, a, a more of a legacy firm in the Rochester area, is also adding 50 new jobs. All told, that's over 2,100 new jobs in the region with 1,500 jobs retained from 2020. And then if we look at 2021, We've already seen 16 companies um, who have expanded. If we go to the next slide. We've seen 16, what we call project wins to date where IEC Electronics has purchased a new facility is, is gonna be adding hundred people. Plug Power has made a, a significant investment in Genesee County after uh, adding a $125 million investment in 2020. They're gonna add over 400 people in the region both to produce hydrogen uh, for their hydrogen fuel cells uh, and build the fuel cells themselves. Fab Exchange has purchased the former on semiconductor facility. Premier Packaging Corp is building out a new operation in Henrietta. Pace Electronics is expanding in the region. ABX, a packaging firm in Wayne County is also expanding and CareStream is on the list again as they've added a new product line here in the region and that's just year to date. Hyzon Motors has also added a $10 million investment and hundred new jobs so to date we've seen over $330 million of new capital investment from private companies, over 550 new jobs promised and 758 jobs retained. So some of that we would like to think is a result of some of the, the marketing, the branding, the storytelling that we focus on as we talk about the region and the connectivity. Not come, People don't wanna come here just to work. They also wanna understand the outstanding quality of life. Our college and universities are a key part of that, both supplying the talent for these firms as well as folks who wanna to come to the region and continue their educational expertise and experience and leverage some of the outstanding resources we have at our college and universities. So with that, I believe uh, that is it for my piece of the, of the branding effort and looking forward to answering any questions we might have. Thank you so much, Matt. And we are now going to be turning to our speaker on uh, how Rochester is a nice place to live and visit. Dan Jeff is from Visit Rochester, will take care of that. Go ahead, Dan, thanks. Thank you very much. It's really a pleasure to be here. Uh, we love to talk about Rochester and Monroe County and what a great place it is. Let me tell you first about Visit Rochester, what we do. The next slide, please. Uh, Visit Rochester is the official tourism promotion agency for Monroe County. We sell and market Greater Rochester as a preferred destination in order to grow and maximize visitor spending to enhance the economy. And my favorite thing about Visit Rochester is that it is an economic driver. Uh, you know, when I get paid and I go to Wegmans and buy my groceries, we're circulating money. But when you get people to come to Rochester, it's new money into the community and it stimulates the economy. And, and that's a great thing to say. We have 400 members representing the attractions, hotels, restaurants, service centers, and working together with our members and partners. And the reason I like to talk about our membership is we're the only upstate community that does that. Buffalo does not have members. Syracuse does not have members. Albany has very few members. And ours is the model for the country and we've won many awards. Next slide, please. The 400 members, and we divide it into segments and these are committees that work with us to try to attack, attract visitors. Uh, see and do, which is our attraction, places like Seabreeze. Uh, places like the Strong Museum of Play. Sleep is our hotel partners. Eat and drink, we work very closely with the restaurants and the restaurant association to promote it. One of the things that's unique to Rochester is for a community our size, we have tremendous restaurants. Uh, we just started the Upstate uh, Eats Restaurant Trail with our partners in Buffalo, Syracuse, uh, and Binghamton. Uh, and visit Rochester to promote restaurants. And we held a virtual press conference yesterday with the Lieutenant Governor to announce that. We have 25 individual member contacts that we use and it's the Visitor Industry Council and they provide education and networking opportunities. Uh, and that's one of the things we're proud of, proudest about is the educational thing. Uh, we have a virtual program to help train uh, hotel personnel, particularly the front desk people, to make them concierges so they know what's available. When somebody comes to the front desk and says, hey, what's there to do? They'll know. 
or they refer them to our website, which is even better. Next slide, please. Our departments, uh, as I go through our departments, I'll explain what they do and what the economic impact is. Next slide, please. Meeting and convention sales. Uh, this is a very big part of our business. We bring pre-pandemic and it's starting again and I'll talk about that later. We bring over 200 meetings and conventions to Rochester every single year. We partner with the convention center and that's a big part of our business. And it's not just in downtown Rochester, it's with our suburban hotel partners also. It's a huge economic impact. Sports meetings and sales, sports is a terrific part of our business and that has maintained busyness all through uh, the pandemic. And we work and, and sports is so successful because we work with our partners. Uh, we have 18 colleges and universities that have excellent sports facilities. Uh, and RIT, I wanna mention is one of our excellent partners. They get it. They help us whenever we have a group that needs sports facilities, RIT is on the top of the list. Event services. Event services, we've received uh, nationwide awards for this. And what this is, is a lot of the destinations when the meeting comes to town, the meeting planner and all the attendees, they say, okay, you're here. We set up information booths. We set up a concierge service. Uh, we really make the visitor feel welcome uh, in the meeting and convention and the leisure side. Uh, tourism programs, come play in our backyard. It's a family focused campaign. And one of the things we've done really successfully working with Matt and his team is aligning the markets together. Uh, you know, we have a, a tremendous opportunity. Our research tells us 87% of the people want to travel in the next six months and the vast majority of those want to drive. So that is a unique opportunity. One of the things I love to talk about is that a third of the population of the United States lives within a five hour drive. So that's, that's a real win for us. Uh, so we're running campaigns uh, in, in those markets, Cleveland, Chicago, uh, Boston, uh, New York City, uh, and our, our fellow New Yorkers, Albany, Buffalo, Syracuse, Binghamton, uh, upstate, Eats Food Trail, we just announced yesterday. Wine, Water, and Wonders, we partner with uh, uh, New York State. Thank you, New York State. Uh, and you can see the visitor service and tourism programs. We partner with, with New York State and Wine, Wonders, and Waters. It's really a neat program and it's international. Uh, they have, I Love New York has offices in London. They have offices in China and we partner offering that Wine, Waters and Wonders program touting Rochester, New York. Next slide, please. Marketing programs, we, we just talked about it. Uh, the marketing programs, enjoy the craft beers. I always like to talk about uh, Roarbox. John Erlab started that 25 years ago when nobody knew what a craft brewery was. Uh, so we have many, many marketing programs. You can see the lilacs, the things to do in the springtime. Our, our website is full of these things and uh, all the meeting and convention and the sports people that come here and leisure travelers, uh, they get uh, to look at our website and figure out what to do. And that's how this business has changed. Before people would call the, the visitors bureau and say, what is there to do? Now with all things on the internet, they're there. They already know what they want to do. We do get some people in our visitor center, but most of them are already tuned in as to what they're due. Our job is to make sure their experience is, is really good. We have a PR and media relations department, which is fantastic at what they do. Uh, they are pre-pandemic. They travel all over the country uh, working on media relations, particularly in New York City. We work with I Love New York. Uh, the last number I saw uh, in unpaid advertising, meaning articles, that when Rachel, who's our, our public relations director, she has travel writers visit Rochester, New York, and the travel writers write articles and blogs about Rochester, New York. Um, the state of New York has put a value on that for Rochester from what Rachel does, about $9 million of free advertising. And social media and the website, is absolutely terrific. Please go to our website and check it out. Uh, we, we have over a million hits on our website. So that, and that's how the business has changed. 
Uh, next slide, please. The tour tourism industry in Rochester. Arts and culture are a huge, huge part of our business. I always say we are the cultural capital of upstate New York, and we are. The museums, Genesee Country Village, The Strong, the George Eastman, Theater, Jiva, RBTL, all the different dance recitals. One of the things that we're really good at is outdoor recreation. You know, and we've seen that during the pandemic, and that will be even more important afterwards. We have over 12,000 acres of park space in Monroe County alone, and the Genesee Country Village and Museum is totally outside. It's great. Craft, beverage, wine, and spirits, we lead upstate in that category. Uh, festivals, uh, is, as Matt said, you know, we're opening up tomorrow. We're kicking off the Lilac Festival. Uh, we've lost a few festivals, but they're starting to come back. And we are the festival capital of upstate. I, someone from the city told me that the city last year issued 126 permits for different festivals. And we are so family friendly and encouraging people to take a road trip. Uh, the, the Strong Museum of Play is, is probably our biggest draw. And it's a terrific facility. And they do a great job of welcoming visitors. Next slide, please. Economic impact of tourism. Economic impact of tourism is more than $1 billion in Monroe County alone. It's responsible for 20,000 jobs. Tourism in Monroe County generates 604 million in labor income. And there's all kinds of benefits that, you know, I mean, if you think about the economics, the dry cleaners, the gas stations, the hotels, the restaurants, the gift shops, uh, the airport. So it's, it's really a, an economic engine. Next slide, please. Tourism in the Finger Lakes. Now, we, we are the gateway to the Finger Lakes. Uh, so in the 14-county region, the visitor spending is $3.3 billion, and we're 35% of that. Tourism drives three-quarters of all labor income in the Finger Lakes, and it's generated strictly through tourism. Next slide, please. The outlook for 2021, the outlook is great. Next slide, please. You know, we're looking for a comeback. You know, as I said, 87% of the people want to travel and most of it by car. So it's been devastating uh, to the tourism, the restaurant and the hotel industry. We had two hotels downtown that were closed. They are now back open. We're getting, we're seeing more and more activity on the website. We're getting more and more questions. So we're, we think we're going to have a tremendous comeback. I think we're going to come back bigger, better and stronger. Uh, than we were before the pandemic. Next slide, please. New developments, the expansion of the Strong Museum, Innovation Square, the former Xerox Tower. What a great idea that is. Apartments downtown, uh, where people can move downtown and have a workspace designated for them in the building. So they can, they can work virtually. Sibley Square, the Mercantile on Main, fabulous. Five great restaurants, they're busy all the time. The green space on Parcel 5 just announced is, is terrific. And Rock the Riverway is a major investment in the city of Rochester. One of the things the mayor did a couple of years ago, they brought in some experts to look at our location to see what we do. And their number one recommendation was take advantage of your riverway. You don't take advantage of the water. Uh, so that's a terrific idea. Next, next one, please. Thank you. I guess I'm, I'm saying thank you. Uh, I'll take any questions that uh, anybody has. And, uh, you know, and one of the things we're asking, we're asking all people in Monroe County and Rochester, invite your family and friends. The number one reason people are going to travel is to visit family and friends, which they haven't been able to do. So we're saying to everybody, invite your family, invite your friends, have them come and visit Rochester. Thank you for the opportunity, guys. Thank you so much, uh, Matt. Thank you so much, Dan. So you both have covered great things around Rochester. You are telling the story of Rochester. You are key. Or you, you are representing, you know, one of the two key organizations to promote Rochester, to grow Rochester, to brand Rochester. So I, I believe, you know, Matt has, you know, stressed the importance of being a nice place to study. I definitely know that, you know, through my experience that 
I'm a professor and, you know, I know that Rochester is a great place to study and teach and learn and etc. So it's, it's time for questions and perhaps we should also perhaps look at what have you learned, you know, from your experiences and what are the future directions and what are those things, lessons that we can perhaps uh, highlight, you know, in this part of the conversation. Yeah, one of the things we can talk about, Matt and I are very involved in Rock 2025, which is a coalition of business leaders. Uh, there was a study done uh, by a group, uh, a consulting group, and one of the things they suggested is forming Rock 2025 to help us work together. And I think that has worked. Uh, Matt and I and and. Bob Duffy of the chamber, we have all worked together for a long time, but this is bringing the city, the county. So everybody has the exact same message, you know, and the message is Rochester is a great place. Monroe County is a great place, whether Matt's trying to get people to, to move their businesses here, or we're trying to get visitors and meetings and conventions and sporting events, but the message and the marketing is going to be the same, uh, which is a really good thing. How about, how about you, Matt? Do you want to add to your RAC 25 uh, conversation? Uh, yeah, um, uh, to Don's point, the other thing that um, the new organization brings to the table is more resources. So one of the, one of the things that came up in that study is, is not only alignment and amplification of the message uh, the, the, and the, an, an understanding of the assets that the region has to offer both people and businesses, but also putting some additional resources behind uh, private organizations like GRE selfishly to help us promote to a greater extent and align that messaging on behalf of the region. So we're beginning to see the fruits of that. And what you what you saw in the, our presentation on the Greater Rock Initiative, there's more uh, that will be coming forward as we build on that place branding. And that's designed to be not only support existing residents, uh, the tourism hospitality market, uh, the intersection of that with the, the business expansion activity and attraction activity that we're involved in, but also help, uh, I think, local residents throughout the region to kind of have a, a better sense of what the region has to offer and to, to own that and become ambassadors for the region. So that's, you know, we're, we're going to be moving into kind of phase two of that very soon. Excellent. You know, we know from our experience, you know, from academia and from, from, from practice is, you know, the key, one of the key point is the partnerships and collaborations. And I believe, you know, what you're really describing is the core role of bringing all these organizations together and deliver a you know, constant and consistent, you know, message to different audiences. Great, thank you. I, I noticed one of the questions in the chat room was about hotels, uh, about different hotels. The Riverside Hotel did close. There was a study done uh, that it could reopen as a smaller hotel, but we have a new owner of the Holiday Inn. Uh, he just, oh, just came into town. We met with him. He's gonna put a lot of money into it. He's gonna redo it. There's a brand new uh, Marriott that's gonna be opening at Easton Alexander, 126 rooms, and that'll be open by mid-June. So we're seeing quite a bit of business. And, and it's good because you always have to match up, you know, how many hotel rooms you have as to what is the availability? You know, they, they got to run at 50 plus to 60% to be profitable. So you don't want to have so many hotel rooms uh, that, that flood the market. So, and, and we did lose quite a few in the Riverside, but we've, we've seen two or three other plans uh, along Chestnut Street, the old Cadillac Hotel, uh, that all kind of shut down when the pandemic started. But we're starting to talk to the developers now about bringing back those hotels as new clean, nice places. And obviously that, you know, that's very close to downtown. It is downtown. So we're excited about that. Excellent. There's a question about uh, how, uh, when you are marketing Rochester to businesses that are based elsewhere, how do you proactively get the word out? Who are the meeting? Yeah, who are they meeting? And how are those meetings set? Matt, that's for you. Yeah, well, I'll take the first one first. Um, so a lot of our efforts are done strategically uh, promoting um, messaging to key industry sectors and decision makers in that. And that's a lot of digital advertising. Um, we have, uh, prior to COVID, we were traveling and attending certain 
uh, trade shows uh, for those specific industry sectors, food and beverage manufacturing, software IT, cybersecurity, uh, gaming, uh, as well as semiconductor and, and a few others, as well as on the site selection front. Um, we are a rather small organization, so we're not at every show, but we are strategic in the sense of mixing that digital messaging, as well as promoting uh, the business expansion and the assets that we have here in the region digitally and well uh, to some of those targeted audiences. And to be honest with you, I, I am not able to give you a list of who I'm meeting with and how those meetings are set uh, because most of what we're doing is uh, a little confidential. So, um, but I can tell you that we are very focused and targeted on decision makers and Swiss uh, C-level executives that have uh, that are looking at corporate expansion opportunities, as well as uh, giving, getting ahead of some of those decision-making opportunities. So they're familiar with Rochester and the assets they have. So there's another question about, you know, somewhat similar about how about, you know, attracting international travelers. Dan, you some, somewhat mentioned this because you said you are working with, I love New York. Perhaps, you know, you, you can expand on this. And I know that there's lots of, uh, culturally ethnic backgrounds in Rochester as well. Do you ever benefit from that? Do you benefit from us, for example, you know, all these international people living in Rochester as well? Good. Yeah, we really do. Uh, you know, our IT and the U University of Rochester attract a lot of international travelers. We work at, at different trade shows around the country where there are tour operators that bring international travelers. Uh, one of the things that we see, which you wouldn't see. Um, we have quite, we, quite a bit of China travel comes to Rochester. And one of the reasons is uh, the tour operators that we work very closely with, they come in and they, they fly people in, they spend three, sometimes four nights in New York City. Then they come up to Rochester where they spend the night, they go to restaurants, and then they go to Niagara Falls. And we stole that one. They used to stay in Cortland and do the Museum of Glass. And we said, okay, why don't you go there in the morning and come with us in the afternoon? So that, that's great. We actually taught a course called China Ready, uh, which we were with a couple of Chinese tour operators to all our hotel partners. And we had a couple hundred people there. Uh, you know, some things about Chinese travel. Uh, people from China do not mind traveling in big groups. Uh, they like tours. They like going on tours. Um, the one that I thought was pretty funny is the one thing we teach our hotel partners is uh, they're they're not deaf. They just don't speak English. Don't don't yell at them. <laughs> don't don't raise your voice. They can hear you. And, and you see that with people that don't they don't speak English. Uh, one of the ladies said, oh, I've got a great idea. We'll go whitewater rafting. We said, no, that's probably not going to work. But one of the victories we had is that when we bought a huge group from China, they went to Syracuse first and they went and they took them all to Dinosaur and they didn't like it a bit. And we took them to a, a restaurant in Brighton, a Chinese restaurant, and they had a ball. So we're, we are China ready and we do see it. And the international is a very interesting, working with Isle of New York in China, in London, in Spain, in Ireland, uh, trying to attract travelers. And a lot of times, Mohammed, you said it, there is a lot of di cultural different uh, ethnic people in Rochester and a lot of times it's their relatives, it's their families coming to visit them. And so that's a great market for us. And in our visitor center, it's interesting. We don't get a lot of Americans, but we get a lot of international travelers because that's what they do in Europe and in China. They go to the visitor center to see what to do. So uh, we have quite a few. And again, RIT and the U of R kind of lead the way in that. So going back to perhaps also, uh, you know, a nice place to study and enjoy the downtown and et cetera, there's a question, you know, what initiatives are underway to draw businesses to downtown Rochester instead of building new complexes out in Victor or John Street? Matt, do you want to take that one, please? Sure. Uh, well, first, it, it really depends on what the business is looking to do. So um, some investments have been made in um, uh, rural areas outside of the city of Rochester, per se, due to the availability of space. So um, when a company needs to build or have 150,000 square feet, or we've seen recently looking for up to 500,000 square feet of space, the, the facility itself has to exist or the space to build that facility. And we're working on a project right now where we need 100 acres 
with 500,000 gallons of water available, as well as the ability to, to um, use to leverage a high BOD count, 700,000 gallons of water coming out. So it's infrastructure related uh, and, and the availability of that existing facility, if we have it uh, throughout the region. Um, and, and also what we do is promote as many uh, sites and buildings that meet the company's requirements as possible so that we can get them to visit here. So there are a number of, we work with a number of firms that are in the city of Rochester, as well as throughout the region. Uh, working with our counterparts uh, and partners at the City of Rochester, Monroe County, as well as uh, all of the nine counties, and including the state of New York. So it really depends on what the company is seeking, um, whether it be space, facility, uh, build, own, lease, etc. So it's oftentimes driven by the company, their timeline, and the ability to provide them with the resources they need to, to build their business. Excellent. Dan, do you want to add anything to this? Yeah, one of the things that we're seeing is uh, Galena Development, which is uh, Andy Galena is a downtown developer. And, uh, he has uh, a project in the in the Xerox Tower that was was vacant, where he is going to bring graduate students in in cooperation with RIT, the U of R, Fisher, Nazareth, Brockport, bring graduate students downtown for downtown campus housing, which will bring a lot of young people downtown, and and that'll spur some business growth. So we all we already have lots of magnitude, lots of clusters of attractions and businesses and everything. They will just grow bigger and bigger, and it's going to be more attractive for for all of us. That's these are great news. I yeah, also and we, and we promote ahead. sorry we promote the uh, Innovation Square as well as the Sibley Building and and all those assets as we talk uh, about the fact that RIT Venture uh, Creations is downtown next core and often companies want to be around that synergy. So it really depends on the market and who we're talking to. In my classes, you know, I often tell my students, you know, smart people, smart organizations, smart cities learn from their mistakes, but they also learn from others' mistakes, others' mistakes and, and et cetera. So I've been seeing lots of transformation, revitalization and everything happening in, in, in Rochester. But I also, you know, glad will see that Rochester is being proactive. So one of those things is, you know, Rock 2025, 20, definitely. Another one is uh, solar eclipse going to be happening on April 8, 2024, right? So we already have started working on it, Dan. So the spread of, you know, starting that, you know, in advance, like seven years in advance, and those, you know, collaborative uh, uh, nature of, you know, relationships in Rochester, where's that coming from? Please go ahead. Yeah, no, you're, you're absolutely right. Uh, a couple of things. One, uh, this is a bicentennial year. We're working with the county on maybe putting something together later this year after the pandemic, a big celebration of Monroe County. We're working with the county on that. Then the next year, you've got the PGA Championship, which will be worldwide attention uh, to Rochester, New York. And we're cashing on that. And then the pandemic is going to be bigger than the PGA. It's going to be absolutely huge. Uh, when they did it in Louisville, they said there wasn't a hotel room for 300 miles. When they did it in St. Louis, the city was so crowded, it took the people that went downtown four hours to get across the bridges because of the traffic. So we already have brought, and I know you're aware of this, Mohammed, the, we have already brought the lady that coordinated the Louisville effort to Rochester. She spent three days here talking to us and getting us ready for that event. And it seems like it's a long way away, but uh, it, it's going to be, the, I think, one of the biggest things Rochester's ever done. We are right in the epicenter. We're the absolute perfect place where the eclipse is going to take place. And people will come from all over the country to experience that. I really enjoy VR being proactive on that. Matt, please go ahead. Uh, I was just going to say ditto to that. Uh, the senior, uh, we're already working on the senior PGA. It's an outstanding opportunity to promote the region. We, uh, we leverage both of these opportunities to bring visitors here, especially on the corporate site selection uh, side and, and have uh, what we call a familiarization tour. And we've done that many times and leverage that, um, especially around the jazz festival and other events uh, to bring people here who perhaps haven't been here before for a, a visit specifically around the, our focus and that's on the corporate attraction side. Excellent. So there's a question about, you know, future sustainable practices, circular economy and et cetera. Any input in that? Have you start training our people around those issues at all? Or is Rochester doing anything around those? Circular economy. 
sustainable initiatives? Uh, well, largely we have a lot of, we certainly leverage the Galasano Institute for Sustainability at RIT. Um, and uh, uh, we have many companies in food and beverage who have uh, leveraged sustainable efforts, as well as the fact that one of the companies I mentioned before, Lifecycle is building a $175 million facility, uh, one of the first of its kind in the world to recycle lithium ion batteries. So right now, when you're done with your lithium ion battery, it goes into the ground. Um, so uh, some of our, uh, in addition to plug power, Hyzon, uh, motors and others are building uh, those green, clean technologies here. So I'd like to think that we're on the cutting edge of uh, certainly current innovation, not to mention what we'll be doing in the future uh, and leveraging some of our material science capabilities to, to really lead the world in that. How about sustainability in hospitality and tourism industries, Don, if you want to add anything to that? Yeah, you know, there, there are hotels, you know, I, I always think of Rochester and Monroe County as being a step ahead. One of the things that it may seem like a small thing, but uh, the state legislature is going to introduce a bill and the government is support it to get rid of the little tiny plastic bottles that you get in your hotel room, in the shower, and to put in something else that is greener and more friendly to the environment uh, for the shampoo and the conditioner, et cetera. It seems like a little thing, but our hotels are already doing it long before they're forced to do it by law. So, and, and you see a lot of that and the recycling and uh, some of the food donations that the hotels give uh, uh, to the homeless and to the shelters. Uh, a lot of it goes unnoticed behind the scenes, but I think we're on the forefront of that. So we had a question before it, it started. Thank you, Dan. We had a question before uh, when, registrant, when uh, our audience was registering. So the question is about stakeholder engagement, whether it relates to destination branding or destination marketing, and what are the good practices around stakeholder engagement? I'd like to hear from both of you. Yeah, on our side, on our side, it's our 400 members and the 2,500 people that we have that are out there every day promoting Rochester. You know, it, it's really a, a, a terrific thing, and we see the results of it. You know, we're the envy of a lot of the uh, convention and, and meeting bureaus because we have all these ambassadors out there and we say to them, you know, everybody belongs to an organization, right? Everybody's got, whether it's the Rotary Club or your, uh, your chef's organizations, whatever it is, bring that meeting to Rochester. You know, we're affordable. Our convention center is much better than that of our competitors in Buffalo, Syracuse. So uh, as far as stakeholders go, and these people do it because it's good for their business. It's not just because they love Rochester, but it's good. They bring in people and it's, and it's everybody. It's the printers, it's the photographers. It's, uh, as I mentioned earlier, the dry cleaners, uh, uh, every little business. And, and when you bring people in, they spend, and when people go on vacation, they spend money. So we have a lot of good stakeholders. And I know Matt does, because uh, his organization was founded by stakeholders. Thank you, Don. That was a nice segue. Uh, so, uh, you know, the only thing I would say is certainly we have investors. We're an investor-led organization. We have over 90 investors that support the work that we do. And one, uh, we and from a stakeholder perspective, we are uh, telling the story of local companies that are doing innovative things, whether they worked with us on their project on a potential expansion or not. And so many companies come to mind. Optimax is a leading optics uh, firm. Uh, uh, Orthoclinical Diagnostics, Thermo Fisher Scientific, HP Hood, IEC Electronics, so many outstanding firms, Invative, uh, Security Risk Advisors, and so many more. So it's, it's also promoting their story, which catches the corporate eye. But the other thing I would call, suggest is that all of us are ambassadors for this region. So when you get on a plane, or when it snows and your friends in Florida might tease you a little bit, you might remind them that we don't have to run from a hurricane and hope our house is still there after they leave the peninsula or get uh, sucked up into a vortex in Oklahoma or anywhere in the Midwest. We have so many awesome attributes. The fact that we're a vibrant arts uh, community, we've got an outstanding Rochester Philharmonic Orchestra, uh, the great quality of life. So. You know, we you can always share the messages that we're putting on LinkedIn, on Twitter, and Facebook, and so many others, as you can with Don. Uh, Don and his team did some outstanding work promoting restaurants and trying to buy local during the during COVID, and helping some of the smaller firms survive. 
and it is all about that. It's, I, I think if we were all a little more neighborly, um, it's not just what we're doing, but it's also what you're doing. Uh, if you love this place, you know, shout a little bit. We, we have a Midwestern mentality. We're a little too limited uh, sometimes in our messaging. We need to brag a lot more and be proud of uh, where we live, work, and play. I definitely agree. So we need to continue uh, highlighting our strengths, our attributes, the, the, the things that we are good at. And we need to make sure that our residents, our students, our faculty, you know, everybody contributes to that. <clears throat> Don, anything to add to that? Or should we go, go to another question? No, we'll go to the ahead. next question. Please. So there's a question about cultural, cultural nuances in branding culture, how culture plays a role, you know, how do we craft our messaging and, you know, perhaps hospitality and et cetera, relating to culture? Yes. And we have, you know, in our arsenal of, of printed material, we have uh, brochures in probably eight or nine different languages uh, that we promote and, you know, we'll promote those with the tour operators. We promote the, you know, we are a culturally very diverse city and County and, and both cultures, both the, the culture of the people and the culture of the arts community. Uh, you know, so we promote that heavily, uh, to, to make, and, and to Matt's point, you know, to make people feel welcome. You know, you're welcome here. The one thing that we're promoting in all of our marketing stuff right now, Mohammed, is Rochester is a very, very safe place. You know, as far as the pandemic, our numbers are really good. People are wearing masks. We're seeing the end of that. We're seeing the restrictions lifted. But, you know, when people come here, they want to know they're safe. And, and, and they are. Excellent. Matt, on cultural the nuances in branding or anything we do in our relationship interactions. Yeah, that may be where it's a little different for us when we're doing targeted marketing, where that most of that is done um, prior to the message, if you will, and specific to the industry that we're focused on. And certainly when we're engaged with the company, um, I have to be careful right now, but uh, you know, if, a, if there's an opportunity for foreign direct investment in the region, uh, we certainly adjust uh, how we serve um, leaders of that company uh, in a way that makes them very um, connected to the region and, and shows that we have that diversity and that uh, focus on helping them make a good business decision here. Yeah, Rochester is a great place in, in terms of you know welcoming diversity. At RIT, we have NTID, National Technical Institute of DEP, but uh, uh, Rochester and RIT and uh, you know, all organizations in Rochester area doing a great job in terms of recognizing that diversity and they do a really good job, I believe. So we have some questions around uh, COVID. So for example, uh, the first question is coming to you, Dan. So natural or outdoor landmarks, how they change you know, post COVID, you know, the engagement with natural attractions is it benefiting Rochester at all? It is because we've got so much outdoor green space. Uh, and that's what people are looking for. As I mentioned, 12,000 uh, acres of uh, park space. You know, the Genesee Country Museum. Uh, we have a lot of outdoor, you know, uh, Bristol Mountain, downhill skiing. Uh, there's just tons of things to do outdoors. And that really helps us. It gives us a leg up. And we talk about that in our literature, on our website, uh, on our social media. Uh, so, and, and I think it's gonna be important afterwards too, because people still, we talked about being safe. You know, if they come here, they can get their space. And there was a question also about the New York kitchen. How does that play into this? You know, I op we often brag at Visit Rochester, you can be in downtown Rochester and in 45 minutes, you can be on a boat in Can Canandaigua Lake, uh, which is one of the most beautiful Finger Lakes. And the New York Kitchen is part of that. We recommend them, you know, for a small group environment, their, their cooking kitchen and their restaurant uh, that overlooks the lake. So that, that was a, a great thing for our region. Yeah, and I would just add that after Brilla located here, their top chefs uh, celebrated with a dinner there um, as, uh, as did Alpina Foods as we welcome them to the region. Yeah, you just mentioned, you know, during your presentation down the Upstate Eats, right? So the website for 
food trail, and they just launched a website and Rochester is already contributing to that. There's a question about food and beverage in Rochester branding. Yes, the, the food trail is great. It's, it's a unique idea. It's terrific. And we brag, you know, for a, a community our size, we've got excellent restaurants. We are really a foodie uh, town. And, you know, we talked about the trail, you know, Abbott's ice cream, almost a century on Lake Ontario. We talked about the hot dog trail down by the lake, you know. We talked about uh, Shaler's and, and, and Bill Walls and Don's Original and uh, Rohrbach's, uh, some very unique places. The public market is a wonderful attraction. We never miss an opportunity when a meeting planner or somebody comes to town that we don't take them to the public market. You know, it's one of the top public markets in the country. Yeah, and then uh, from our perspective too, the the fact that we've got outstanding um, agricultural land and and some of the top production uh, arable land in New York State, um, uh, supplying not just New York State but really the world with food and beverage, uh, outstanding companies of quality there with Wegman's Constellation, Ladestri Food and Drink, Baldwin Richardson Foods, uh, HP Hood, and so many more, uh, but also that connection from farm to table. And uh, we can prove that point. The outstanding packaging resources uh, at RIT, our connectivity to Cornell, while it might be a little bit outside the region, the food and science uh, technology is amazing. And all the innovation uh, between that food to table technology associated with that, uh, the work that we're doing with farmers uh, in Love Beats uh, is a great example, using drone technology to get better yields out of fields. So that's connectivity between RIT, Cornell, the farmers and the processor. So, that's just some of the activity that goes on behind the scenes to support an outstanding key industry in this market. Thank you, Matt. So I have a question from Zaur. He's, I know that he is one of our alumni and working in Azerbaijan as a destination management uh, professional. He's asking about, you know, how do we engage locals? Let me start with that and then you can, you know, help me uh, do that. So you need to excite your residents, right, locals. You need to educate them. You need to make sure that they know what's available in Rochester or in your in your area, and you need to perhaps organize some events to do so. So, what kind of things you do to to do so, Dan? Educating yeah. your locals and exciting them about you know promotion and engagement. Yeah, well, this week is a good example. Uh, we picked out four hotels where uh, it's National Travel and Tourism Week, obviously, but we picked out four hotels and we invited members to come, and we gave away free Abbott's ice cream free brown hound chocolate chip cookies. Uh, I need to go on a diet. But anyway, so we, we, we did that and, and it attracted a lot of people and it was really neat to see. Uh, and so engaging and the 2,500 members, you know, when we have those meetings, we get like 160 to 175 people at those meetings and we talk up Rochester, we talk up and, and hopefully they get engaged and go out and promote it. And and it's been fun watching some of the people that, who are members of ours, who really, really get excited about promoting the region and promoting Rochester. And the word of mouth advertising is so valuable to us. Hey, you ought to go to Rochester. That strong museum is terrific. Your kids will love it. And you know, have you been on the rides at Seabreeze? Or have you gone down to Rohrbox and taste their craft beer? You know, we've got so many things to do. One of the things we run into when meeting planners come in and they've only got two days is to cram it all in so they can see it. Then, so I, I believe perhaps, you know, you can also refer back to Rock 25. That is one way of perhaps, you know, bringing all these different locals and, you know, organizations together to promote what we have here, right? Yes, that's I meant that's Matt, sorry. Thinking, but, yeah. yeah, that's the thinking. Sorry, I didn't mean to talk over you, Don. Uh, but that's part of the, the work that we're trying to do is engage more of the residents to really own that brand. And uh, again, it's in the earlier phases, but that's the thinking behind that, to leverage not only better inform uh, all the awesome things that Visit Rochester is doing and some of our local businesses are doing, but to help have much more um, ambassadorship, if you will, ownership of that and uh, belief in some of the outstanding things that are going on here. Excellent. So I think we covered, you know, most of the questions. And there's one more question we have there, which is about if you were to describe Rochester with three words, mm -hmm. what would they be? I can give you some, you know, 30 seconds to think about it, Dan, and 
Matt. Three words to describe Rochester. Or if you're ready, please go ahead, Tom. How about how about just freaking amazing? I only need one word, smart. <laughs> and I, I, I put home, you know. Rochester became home for me, home of great things as well. I can say that. Yeah. And I see that, you know, one, one of our students, you know, who graduated from RIT as well, he's joining us today. He says that, you know, he keeps uh, promoting Rochester. So if people have good experience in Rochester as we do, and they just promote it, and he's right about that. Go ahead, Matt. And, and one of the interesting, I'm sorry, Matt. One of, no, the interesting, one of the interesting stats we talk about at Rock 2025 is about RIT. 30% of RIT's alumni stay in Rochester. That's an amazing compared to other colleges and universities. And that says a lot for RIT and also for Rochester. Yeah, it's one of our keep selling points. The only thing, there was a question I saw that went by um, something about what region do we um, lose opportunities to. There isn't really one region we compete with more than another. It really depends on the industry. Um, we, we have competed more with Indiana, Ohio, some of the Midwestern uh, communities from time to time. And it really comes back to each individual project. It's a timeline issue. Is the infrastructure there? Um, where is the corporation already located? 80% of growth comes from within, within, which is why we call on existing companies and, and try to make sure they're growing and successful here. Uh, the attraction side is much more uh, competitive and complicated. Um, so it, it really kind of depends. There isn't one over another. There are certainly some regions that market themselves very well, but I would argue, having been on some panels with folks from those regions, we've got everything they do and more, um, and we're very hopeful on the future and, and where we see the community going. Yeah, with, with us uh, competing for the meetings and conventions, it's mostly upstate, and we compete uh, quite a bit with Buffalo, Muhammad, but it's really not a fair fight because we have so much more to offer than Buffalo does that you know, it's, it, it's not very hard to compete with them. Excellent. So I will turn to our department chair, Bill Dresnak, to say a few words, you know, for the closing. But before that, perhaps, you know, I would like to ask you, Don and Matt, is there anything do, do you want to say at the, in, in, in the final remarks? Or you're also no, just, just please ask your friends and relatives to visit Rochester. Yeah, I think that's big, especially now as, as companies are coming out of COVID, you know, uh, buy local, um, promote uh, the business that you may walk by, stop in, uh, have a cup of coffee, especially as they're getting up and running, um, uh, you know, buy a meal, uh, not just a gift card, but really get in there, uh, have dinner and dessert um, and uh, tell your friends. Excellent. Bill, please. Thanks, Mohammed. Uh, I just want to thank uh, Don and Matt for uh, for doing this. But I got to tell you, Don, I think it was you who said, you know, we want people to shout out about this place or you want to shout about this place. Um, I've lived here for about 35 years and came from the New York City area. And um, I think Matt had said this, you know, this is a place that's big enough to matter, but small enough to connect. And I think that is, that really captures a lot. Um, the fact that this group is connecting um, the economics, the tourism, the education. Um, there's just a lot of things going on here, but it's a small enough community where I'm thinking of the six degrees of Kevin Bacon, right? It's maybe, it's maybe two degrees of anybody in, in the area. And um, it's uh, someone else had asked a question about three words to describe it. And I, I have two, and the two I'm going to mention are innovative and proactive. Um, when I say I've been here for about 35 years, I came at the tail end of the big three of Kodak, Xerox, and Bausch & Lomb really dominating the market. But innovation from those companies, from higher ed, from the from the uh, the business community, and it's like we never skipped a beat. We never missed a beat. Um, the, the community pulls together and grows and innovates. Um, so again, thank you to Matt and Don. Thanks to all uh, all of the attendees. I think this was a great session. I really enjoyed uh, listening to the discussion, and I hope we can have another one again sometime soon. So shout out about Rochester and Monroe County and the, the 12, 15, 13 county region, whatever whatever number of counties we're measuring there. Thanks again, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Bill. Thank you, Don. Thank you, Matt, for your enlightening presentations. And we are looking forward to connect with those who are interested in contributing to promotion of Rochester. My email for that is mxk. I S M X K M X K I G I N at R I T dot E D U. So we look forward to hearing from those who are interested in. Thank you so much. Thanks. Bye everybody Thank for you. those who Thank also you. participated. Bye. Thanks.